Thanks, Tim, uh, and welcome everyone to this call. If we can go to the next slide, thanks, and then the next one. So just to follow up on Tim's description, Gnosis is a software as a service company. Uh, our business is to develop SaaS solutions, which fundamentally connect people and information. Next slide, please. Well, we do this at the moment by three offerings to the market. The first one is our knowledge management uh, platform, uh, which is branded Knowledge IQ. Uh, this solution very much is used by call center teams and by a businesses and customers to find answers to questions, to understand what processes they need to follow and to help guide that interaction between the end customer and that particular business in a very efficient, productive way. The second offering that we have in the SaaS market is our employee experience intranet. Now, basically, this is a digital workplace where an employee logs into first thing in the morning and it provides a platform where they get all of their news. They get access to the information, the documents they need to fulfill their roles. But more importantly, it's done in a very visual, engaging way so that they can interact not only by themselves, but with people within their teams or across the broader business. Now, the first third SaaS offering we have is our Libro library management solution. Now, this solution fundamentally is a web-based offering which enables libraries to manage not only the traditional physical assets that they have within their facilities, but more importantly, the digital assets that they either own or they source from other parties. And basically what we do is we provide a solution that helps them automate a lot of their internal processes, checking in, checking out, payments, but, more, but most commonly it's about giving access to members. How can they access physical digital resources remotely uh, from their homes, from their offices, etc. Next slides, please. So like in any business, there are a number of underlying industry trends which are driving the demand for our SaaS solutions. The first one being remote working. People are remote from the office or a customer is remote to the business who wants to transact with. How do we connect? How do we uh, establish that communications and have a really good customer experience? The second uh, driver for us is really that consistency of customer interaction. By way of an example, you know, customers these days, particularly after COVID, a lot of things are done online. Some things are done in person in a branch office. Uh, they may interact with uh, the organization's uh, website. It's very important for organizations to have consistent advice, information, answers published across all those digital channels so that there can never be a mismatch. The third area and one that we really excel at is uh, governance and compliance. Uh, and you'll see when we look at the sectors that we operate in, the reason for this. But by that, what we mean is that you have to control what information is generated, how that information is approved by the business or organization, and then how it's distributed to its employees or to its customers. But more importantly, you have to be able to track what information was used in an engagement between an employee and an end customer, or if the customer's coming in digitally, what information were they accessing and can you create a history in case there's an issue of some nature? And the fourth one is a really generic one, but a very common one is the explosion in information. The amount of content we create is large. The amount of updating of content is a daily thing in a lot of organizations and industries. Next slide, please. So if we look at Gnosis, we operate a SaaS vertical strategy. Our four key industry markets or sectors are hospital and healthcare. The next one is banking and financial services. We then have retail, and then we have government. Now, as an organization, what we like to see is that we have more than one offering that we promote into a particular industry uh, segment. And as you can see here, we've highlighted the differing offerings that fit very well within those particular industry segments. Now, an important thing about our business is 
We don't operate these as individual businesses as such. These are SaaS solutions and we have a shared services model. And what that means is the same sales marketing team is responsible uh, for conducting that business, the product development, the technology team uh, delivers on all three solutions. And that goes across uh, all the different departments uh, within our organization. And that's where we get efficiencies uh, from that. And more importantly, we can focus on common components that are shared across the three solutions. And for us, it's intelligent search. Uh, the next uh, element we focus on is governance that we build within our solutions, uh, personalization, how we deliver that solution information to the employee or the end customer. And the really big one is security. Uh, that is a very high evaluation um, profile that customers are looking for for vendors. And our solutions, we try to put as much security as we can uh, within them. And it's an area we're always investing in. So we try to focus on those four principles across our three solutions uh, that we offer. Next slide, please. So to give you an idea of you know, the traction that we have in the marketplace, uh, you can see the different logos. So we have large enterprises from ANZ Bank to Optus, to Harvey Norman, to Kathmandu, to smaller high value mid-market uh, opportunities. But in terms of our total customer numbers, uh, we have about 335 customers across our portfolio of solutions. And the split of that between what we call enterprise and mid-market, I think is pretty interesting. Uh, we have just on 11% of our uh, customers are enterprise. That is, they have more than a thousand users of a, one of our solutions or mid-market is generally a business or organization that has less than a thousand. And then if you look on the left-hand side, the split of our customers uh, by industry, the largest segment is government. Uh, we have a lot of customers in local government and are increasing in the state government level, but we also have them in banking and financial services, health, and the other areas that I spoke of previously. Next slide, please. In terms of where we derive our revenue, now Gnosis is a global company. Uh, as you can see on the right-hand side, 70% of our revenue approximately comes from Australia and New Zealand, but the other 30% is derived outside of that uh, boundary. Our next largest segment is the US, uh, where we have a very good footprint and have operations in, and then it's split between the rest of the world, EU and Asia. In terms of the contributions of our SaaS solutions, as you can see on the left, uh, the uh, largest contributor uh, this year is Green Orbit, our employee experience intranet, uh, sitting at about 30, 41%. The next largest is our knowledge management platform, followed by our Libero library management solution. So it's a good diversification of our revenue stream by product, but it's also a good diversification of our customer base as well. Next slide, please. So this is just really a snapshot of our half year results. Uh, some of you may have seen this and this may be the first time for others. So for the half year, we had operating revenue of 5.3 million. We were up 19% on the previous comparable period. Uh, in terms of recurring revenue and as a SaaS business, obviously recurring revenue uh, is the key metric for us. Uh, that had grown up to 4.8 million for the first half and that's a 25% increase from the previous calendar year. So if we look at what's happening with recurring revenue, our projection uh, from the end of January going out is we're currently projecting 9.6 million, hopefully heading towards breaking through the $10 million barrier as we go forward. As you can see, we have a very good gross margin and from a cash flow point of view, uh, we are virtually essentially um, at a break even position for the first half with just a small cash outflow. And obviously we're hoping to achieve uh, similar for the second half of this financial year. And to the left, you can see our uh, SaaS recurring revenue, and you can see the growth profile uh, from the business from uh, FY16 
up to the January period. So we're continuing to grow the business and growing the business from our portfolio now. Next slide, please. So I'd like to just touch on the future direction of the business, uh, what we're planning and to give you a bit of an insight into where we're going. If I can have the next slide, please. So as a business, we continue to invest in growth, but we do it in a manner that's within our means. Uh, and by that, I mean, we are not a business that consistently goes out and raises money to invest in growth every six months or 12 months. We operate a very conservative model where we try to balance you know, what's happening in the growth side of the business with our expense and cost side as well. So the first initiative we've got is very much relative to market fit. So we have a portfolio of three solutions and what we are focused on as a business is what can we do to those three solutions to improve the value proposition and also drive new customers uh, from that. So we've increased an in R&D team. Uh, we focus on the industry sectors so that we can add features and functionality that we believe are of value. But probably one of the biggest things is we're opening up the platforms so that they become more open and can integrate with other software. The second initiative we've got is our go-to-market. So we've expanded our dedicated sales and marketing team over the past uh, half year and year in reality. Uh, but we're doing a slightly different approach for the, this calendar year. And we're going to look at partnerships as a way to drive more organic growth, particularly in the key markets of Australia and the US uh, is what we're targeting uh, as an organization. And the third area that we're focused upon is operating leverage. So what we're doing is we're consolidated and have consolidated a lot of our operations into the Melbourne office. Uh, we started with test and support activities, and we continue to look at opportunities where we can be more efficient by bringing uh, teams together in the one location. Another initiative we've got is common software uh, components. So we, at the moment, we are developing a new AI search uh, component, which will go into Knowledge IQ and Green Orbit, and will ultimately go into the Libero product as well. And by developing the one component that can be reused three times, that's where we generate that efficiency that we are looking for. And the other area we're really focused upon is enabling customers to self-serve. What I mean by that is in terms of training, in terms of support and onboarding, the more they can do, the less resources we need to do uh, to do that for them. So that's a real initiative for us as a business. Next slide, please. So what's the outlook for us as a business? Uh, we are certainly targeting continued organic growth in our revenue and our ARR, and we're looking at uh, a window of somewhere between 10 and 20% for FY23. Uh, we have a significant uh, pipeline of commercial opportunities for the second half of this year, which we hope will help us to achieve you know, our ultimate goals. And more importantly, you know, we continue to look at our operating leverage, you know, looking at our revenue growth, looking at what we're doing from a cost expense point of view, and trying to keep a balance there as an organisation. Uh, our aim is not to go to the market to raise capital for general operating um, expenses. Uh, and to do that, we need to balance revenue growth and what we're spending. The third area, obviously, is we're aiming to be cash flow break even uh, for the full year. And, and that's a target that we've set ourselves. And we're well on the way to that with the first half result. And I suppose, generally speaking, the industry trends continue to be favourable for us as an organisation. Remote working continues. The customer experience being an important part of businesses uh, because customers are coming through digital channels. All of these things are helping drive the demand for our solutions. Next slide, please. Oh, that's it. So I'll certainly open up for questions. Thanks, John. Um, AI seems to be a, a theme to the line of questioning. So is that a, an opportunity for Knowledge IQ or, or is it a threat? No, it's actually an opportunity because AI generally you know, is a technology uh, platform that you integrate within your own application and such. So when we talk about the intelligent AI-based search, 
it's really about um, it's a it's a technology that we build into our application that's resident that enables it to find understand the individual's question because what we see is a lot of people who are searching uh, they want to find the one result but they're asking the question in ten different ways so you need that intelligent search to be able to say I understand this question this is the result that needs to be delivered to that person so it's actually improves the efficiency and the benefit of the system by introducing AI into it. And, and government seems to be a, a, a big component of your revenue if you break down the sectors. I would have thought that'd be the most difficult sector to get. Why, why is government um, you know, such a strong driver of your revenue? Look, uh, government is because, uh, and I think everyone understands this, government can be slow, but once you've acquired uh, a government agency, be it a council, state government, they tend to provide you deliver on, on your um, offering to them to stick with you. The contracts are generally long-term. You know, they go five, 10 years in duration. Uh, and probably that's the average engagement of our government customer base is probably around 11, 12 years, which is really good. But you still have the requirement to keep releasing new features, improving the product. Uh, it's just a thing that has occurred with a lot of effort, a lot of tendering um, over you know the past you know seven eight years realistically uh, with that to keep them. And and you, you touched on favourable industry trends. I think I think I read somewhere um, that private equity is is kind of jumping into measuring uh, technology that measures um, employee engagement and productivity, particularly with this kind of work from home um, policy now. Is that a, a trend you're looking at, as in, in being involved in measuring um, employee act, uh, productivity? Yes, look, we're seeing that um, particularly in the uh, intranet uh, employee experience solution that we are seeing more requirements or requests for analysis of you know, what is happening uh, with that individual and the solution. You know, what are they doing? What are they using? what's you know, delivering them the best uh, content and outcomes. And that's, uh, you know, analytics and those type of things are becoming a, a real part uh, of the offering now. And that extends even into the knowledge management, particularly in call centres and things like that. They're very, very, you know, astute with analysing, you know, what their agents are not only doing day to day, but, you know, trying to improve the outcomes of the agent's interaction with uh, the end customer. So we're doing things, uh, we're doing uh, soon to release, hopefully the integration with Genesis uh, so that it can be used in any business that uses Genesis to help the agents um, interact with those queries and customers coming in through really providing knowledge within the Genesis um, application itself. So they only have to look at one screen and they get the knowledge served up to them. And you can track that, which means you can improve it and make it better uh, over time. And that's what organisations are looking for. Thanks, John. Really interesting space at the moment with AI and, and all the uh, other opportunities ahead of you. Um, good luck out there. Great. Thanks very much.